Okay, I've been sponsored by Gamer Subs a lot lately. It's great. Definitely try it out. Link in the description. Delicious. Fantastic. Wonderful. Gamer Subs. Code Bricky. Mmm. But considering this is an ongoing sponsorship, a lot of people have come to like a stream or something and said, hey, Bricky, you know, obviously you got your sponsorship and stuff, but what do you like really think of the product? And so I thought, hey, let me go ahead and make a video talking a little bit more about it. So check the description. I have an unlisted video about why gamer subs. Why am I constantly advertising this? Why am I passionate about this product? And hopefully it can quell any thoughts, fears, or issues that you might have in your head. Overall, it's really good stuff. I really like it. I highly recommend it. But if you need a little more convincing, watch the video. I'll explain it a little bit more, explain it from my side a little bit more, and, you know, show you why I'm pretty decent with this sponsor. So, Titanfall 2. Hello everybody, my name is Bricky, currently running from the law for using the AWOL. It makes the G2 like a two shot to the body, how, how could I resist? Titanfall 2 is a first person shooter released October 26, 2016, developed by Respawn Entertainment, who originally had Titanfall 1 created way back in 2014. The game's main selling point was a movement-oriented FPS that added an extra layer of depth to it, being giant controllable Titan mechs that you could call in and operate on the battlefield itself. This formula massively changed up the way the game played due to the addition of things like double jumping, wall running, and due to taking place in a sci-fi future lots of different kinds of tech such as cloak, grapple, etc. While most FPS games have time to kills in the milliseconds, and while that is the same for the pilot-on-pilot -pilot gameplay, the Titans were more on the lines of something like an Armored Core or a Mech Warrior, where the time to kill was measured in much longer periods of times, and therefore things like movement, plink damage, being able to have long extended gunfights was a major part of the game. Combining that with how pilots operate with the Titans, and you had a brand new FPS formula. This game, Titanfall two is one of the top five best FPS games I have ever played. It shares in the upper echelons with games like Halo 3, Wolfenstein The New Order, Doom 2016, Battlefield Bad Company 2, and more. While I don't do a whole lot of flat out reviews, this is one I've been wanting to make for a very long time. So let's start it off with a quick history lesson. Pilot control initiated. Welcome back. Respawn Entertainment were originally part of Infinity Ward under Activision, and they went to create Call of Duty 4 and Modern Warfare 2, the classic Call of Duty games. During the production of Modern Warfare 3, Respawn Entertainment left the company. About half of the employees from Infinity Ward bailed because of... Calling it messy would be an understatement with the sheer amount of lawsuits and things going on. But long story short, there was a huge issue with Activision. Half the company left to go found Respawn, which is another reason why, if you notice, MW3 has lots of different companies in the beginning. That's why, to make up for the lost personnel. Soon after, that group of Infinity Ward that left became Respawn Entertainment, and they created Titanfall 1 back in 2014. The idea was to create a shooter that had a bit more of a movement potential to it, but also add that extra layer to make it much more different than the average average Call of Duty or Battlefield by having giant fucking mechs inside the game. Titanfall 1 could be described at best enjoyable and at worst aggravating. The game had a campaign, so to speak, which was literally just cutscenes added to normal multiplayer games, and at the time, this was the first major multiplayer-only release that cost $60. The gameplay was definitely different and was actually quite fun, but it suffered from pretty extensive balancing issues, such as the Titan customization and the a pretty awful burn card system, which was fun in theory, but became quite aggravating. It definitely changed up the formula quite a bit between the movement potential and the Titans, as well as some of the maps, but unfortunately, Titanfall 1 really started to fall short when it came to just the longevity of the game. There wasn't very much progression, there wasn't very much customization to go through. So often, a lot of people played Titanfall, enjoyed it, but then dropped it rather quickly. This leads us to Titanfall 2, where it seems that the company has grown in almost every single department. The movement system was completely redone and retooled to offer way more momentum and a lot more of a smooth playstyle. The Titans were adjusted from a pick-your-own chassis and weapon system to six separate classes, and there is a fully-fledged, full-blown campaign to go along with it, as well as a myriad of new customization options and progression. This took Titanfall 1's, while more 
expansive movement system than an average FPS game, but still sometimes kind of rigid and a little bit clunky at times, and it made it smooth as butter. Even five years later, few games have the same smooth movement system that Titanfall 2 has. So much was added to give a new lease of life to the Titanfall franchise, so to speak. All the new customization and personalization options were really impressive. It added things like calling cards, banners, emblems, nose arts for your Titan, different kinds of camos for your pilot weapon and Titan as well, and even you can choose your faction, something that since Modern Warfare 2 and the Army Rangers soundtrack I have always wanted. But truly, if we want to talk about the major thing that they upgraded on, we must discuss the campaign. Scorch AI transferring controls to pilot. Unlike just multiplayer games with cutscenes, Titanfall 2 had a fully fledged campaign. You played as Jack Cooper, a militia grunt fighting off the IMC. If you want to know more about the frontier wars and stuff, check this video out. It's the first thing I talk about. Jack Cooper is being trained by a militia pilot, kind of under the radar to be a pilot himself. And when said mentor goes, you know, dead, in the first mission by the IMC and the Apex Predator Mercenary Group, led by Cuban Blisk, you then take up the mantle as a pilot and use his Titan BT-7274 to escape the IMC's clutches and go back to the militia to assist with the war effort. This campaign carries itself very similarly to, say, John Wick or, like, Mad Max, where the actual story, the plot, is not very interesting. It's a classic war effort militia versus IMC type thing. However, that's not where the excitement comes from. Like those other two movies, the game is short and sweet. It is only four hours long and does not have a single dull moment during those four hours. It lets the environment and it lets the gameplay do all the storytelling it needs to. BT and Cooper bond with that simple, like, robot doesn't understand human metaphors cliche that we've all seen, but it's not at the forefront, so it's not something that makes you groan or anything as you're playing. It's more just a little bit of background characterization that helps make these incredibly well-done sandboxes that much better. The level design of Titanfall 2 is some of the best level designing I've seen in in ever. Every mission has either some kind of gimmick or an awesome set piece that fully makes use of the incredible movement system of the game. And it really makes you feel like so much above the enemies that you're currently fighting. Whether it's a factory ran by a psycho robot or going through the actual flying ships of the IMC or Effect and Cause, one of the greatest missions ever made, there isn't a single time where I felt like any part of the game was actually lacking. And that's why I think the four hour runtime is actually a benefit rather than a detriment. While short, yes, it is used incredibly well. If it was any longer, I feel like it would have been padded or stretched out. If it was any shorter, it wouldn't have been enough. It was the perfect portioning of gameplay. The story is in the forefront, and while I can appreciate big heady themes and metaphors and games plenty, it's not really needed in this game. This is a quick, fun action romp with some fantastic gameplay and levels. And if there's anything I really had to say was a bit of a negative, it would be the boss fights as they don't feel particularly exciting. Except for one. Two to one. Vipers on station. Your journey ends here, pilot. But from beginning to end is a constantly enjoyable ride. It makes use of the gameplay and the movement system perfectly. It is fun. It is interesting. It keeps me excited throughout the entire campaign. And honestly, the game is worth buying for the campaign alone. But of course, we do need to discuss the multiplayer, as this is a multiplayer FPS game. Pilot control initiated. Focus. Plan. Attack. While the campaign is worth the asking price alone, often the backbone of these games is of course the multiplayer. And for Titanfall 2's sake, the improvements made on the first game I think really elevated above the competition. And even if you haven't played the first game, you could still appreciate the very smooth gameplay loop that they have going for them. I'd say 90% of the changes were better. For example, the movement system of course is way more fluid and way smoother. The speeds that you can reach with the momentum that you can give yourself is actually significantly higher than it was in Titanfall 1, especially with the original game's console FOV. But the gameplay itself consists of many modes. The main one is Attrition. Attrition is your classic team deathmatch. You load in via dropship, you jump down, you kill enemies to reach a score. There are also little minions and stuff you can kill as well if you feel like it. Kind of makes it feel more like a battle than just a little skirmish between players. And then when the game is over, the team that lost can evac onto a shuttle and you all get one life remaining 
intervene to try to stop them. It's a fun little idea instead of just having it slap and be like, game's over, game's done. There's a little bit of like an epilogue to it. Once it's done, you load into a new one, you keep on going. There are also other game modes like Amped Hardpoint, which is kind of like Domination. There's like a bounty hunting game mode. I forget the exact name of that one. There's Pilot versus Pilot only. There's a lot of game modes this game has, though I personally mainly play Attrition because it's just, I like the classic TDM style thing. And I'm mainly gonna be referring to that when I talk about the multiplayer. But it runs really similar to the average way that most multiplayer games do. You have a create a class system, of course. You can choose a primary, secondary, and anti-Titan weapon, equipment, special abilities, everything from cloak to grapple to AWOL, pulse blade, hologram, phase shift, stim, lots of lots of options there. And then a few perks as well to go with it. And of course, you got to pick your, your damn Titan. Now, back in Titanfall 1, you were able to pick a chassis, which was the fast but weak, the middle ground, or the tanky but slow. Now, in Titanfall 2, you don't get any of that customization anymore. You don't get to pick your gun or perks or anything like that or equipment you actually all have their own dedicated classes for the Titans. Ion is a jack of all trades and has a little bit of an energy meter to use their abilities. Scorch is a movement manipulation and close range monster. You also have Northstar, who's a sniper Titan. Ronin, who's a short range squishy Titan with a sword. You have Tone, which is for just, you know, serial killers, and you have Legion, who's gun. The lack of customization is something that some people really did miss out on. However, I'd say the game is 9,000 times more balanced with this new class system. Each Titan looks very distinct, and each Titan has distinct strengths and weaknesses. If I see a North Star, I know I need to close the gap, and if I see a Scorch, I know I need to get away from the gap. They all have the same weapons, they all have the same options for their perks and tacticals and equipment. So once you know about them, and once you learn about them, you don't have to worry very much anymore about, hey, what could they be carrying? What kind of ability could they be having? No, you know that a Ronin has face shift, a Ronin has arc wave. It makes identifying each Titan much easier, knowing how much health that Titan normally carries and what abilities they have to allow for a much more streamlined gameplay experience. It's no different than when you're playing a MOBA or something and you see a certain character in the enemy team. You know what abilities they have, you know what they want to build. It makes it easily identifiable. Now, the actual gun-on-gun -gun gameplay is pretty standard. The time to kill is rather quick, and you have your usual hip-fire, ADS, that, all that kind of stuff. You've got grenades and all. Though for Titans, you have shields and also health, and neither of these things regenerate except for some special abilities. And so when you have your Titan, playing a little bit more cagey with it is actually the main thing, where when you play as a pilot, you can grapple onto a wall, fling yourself across the dang map, and start beating on people. But with a Titan, it's a lot more important to be a little bit more cautious with it because that Titan doesn't get its health back. Now, getting your Titan generally involves waiting a period of time that goes faster with the more kills you get. Often, people who are just fragging out like mad will get their Titan very early, but calling it early isn't always the best idea because all the pilots have anti-Titan weapons, and often you'll have some little asshole just sticking a pixel out of a window firing his gun at you and you can't really retaliate. The thing that really makes Titan fall different than so many other FPS games is that the trailers don't lie. When you look at a Titanfall trailer, when you look at what's going on and the craziness you're seeing here, that's just a normal game of Titanfall. That is a completely normal game. You can do things like that. I have constantly flung myself across the map with a grapple hook, go ahead and shot a guy out of midair, slid, punched another guy to death, jumped on a Titan, ripped the battery out and give it to my buddy. This happens. Those awesome super soldier craze character moments happen all the time. Unlike, say, Halo, which I love Halo, don't get me wrong, but Master Chief doesn't feel like Master Chief when you're playing multiplayer in Halo. In Titanfall, you feel like a pilot. It's one of the reasons why I like attrition, because all the grunts and stuff are on the ground, and it shows just how much of a higher tier soldier you are. You also have this new level of customization that goes along with it too. Leveling up your Titan unlocks new types of camos for it, new kinds of nose art, which is actually one of my more favorite parts of the Titan customization. And there's also things like banners and emblems that you can add to your main character, as well as the camos too. A lot of the banners are really good too. They have some fantastic artistic direction on them, and some of them are, are so damn good. I wish I kind of knew the artists of a few, so I, I would get them like printed up and put in my office. They're really good. I think the only negative I have from Titanfall 2 to 1 is that I think Titanfall 1 has significantly better maps. Titanfall 2's maps are fine, but they feel like they lack a little bit of character, and certain maps just really aren't that enjoyable, minus a few. I think Titanfall 2 maps are, are pretty 
okay, but Titanfall 1 maps have some really great ones that I kind of wish were brought back instead of the ones that they actually did. I want Lagoon. I like Lagoon. Now the question, is Titanfall 2 a balanced game? No. Titans like Ion, Tone, and Monarch are absolutely disgustingly powerful. Stim, Car, things like that are incredibly strong. However, is almost everything in Titanfall 2 usable? Yes. And that's the big difference. Every weapon in Titanfall 2 is generally usable besides maybe some like bad pistols or something like that, some secondaries. But even so, there is nothing that you can't use in the game. Every Titan is usable. Every weapon is usable. Every tactical is usable. There is nothing in that game that you can't actually do well with. And that's the big difference, I think, between that and other games, where a lot of other games, there are flat out inferior bad weapons. I don't think there's anything particularly bad in Titanfall 2, maybe besides like one or two things. Everything can be used. Like, yes, if I'm using a Mastiff against a, a car, they're gonna beat me most times, but not all the time. If we're equal skilled, yeah, it'll be difficult, but I can kill people with the Mastiff plenty if I need to. If you really wanna be a meme stiff user, be a meme stiff user. So to give you the depth of this game, the Gravity Star is a piece of equipment. It is a throwing star that pulls in enemies, you know, gravity and stuff like that. This affects projectiles because it's, it's gravity star, right? The Kraber is a projectile-based sniper rifle. So there are people, there are people out there that are such fucking gods that they use gravity stars to curve Kraber bullets into people. This is a thing you can do in Titanfall, okay? This is the level of depth you have in a game like this. It is ludicrous. And the amount you can do, the amount of like skill that you can achieve in Titanfall is monstrous. And that's why there are no weapons that are technically bad because a lot of times it depends on you as a player. And it honestly makes Titanfall's multiplayer just so fucking good. Oh yeah, Frontier Defense. Um, I haven't played a whole lot of Frontier Defense. Some people really like it. It's like a wave-based defense mode. It was added post as extra free content, which is pretty cool, but um, some people really, really like it. I haven't played it a ton, uh, but they say it's good. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna say it's good too. You can try it out if you like wave defense. Oh, speaking of post-launch. North Star Systems transferred to pilot. Post-launch, Titanfall 2 saw some DLC content, some free, some paid. For the free DLC, they added a whole bunch of new maps to the game. Uh, some of the ones from Titanfall 1, particularly Angel City, which is probably my favorite map in the game, as well as a few other ones here and there. They also added some other stuff, such as the new Monarch Titan, which is why we went from six to seven Titans, and the Frontier Defense Mode 2. Though, however, they do have plenty of paid DLC. Now, Titanfall 2 operates on a classic pay-for-what-you-want system. There are no loot boxes whatsoever in the game, unlike its its father part project, which, you know, damn it. But all this new stuff is almost entirely cosmetic, with the exception of just one thing, which are the special fancy pantsy weapon skins that you can get, which have a small chance to give you a double XP token, which really isn't anything special, but it is kind of nice to have sometimes. And some of those skins look, look really damn good. There are also things like new Titan nose art, new Titan skins, new skins and camos in general, also things like new banners and new emblems. But honestly, out of all that stuff, the number one thing that's actually, I'd say, the most worth of your money is the Prime Titans. Prime Titans have no gameplay changes whatsoever compared to regular Titans. They just look different and their voice lines are a little bit different as well. But the main thing is they have new terminations. And that there is enough for me to buy the damn thing. It is important to distinguish the fact that Titanfall 2 is done with their updates and has been for some time. There will most likely not be any more DLC coming out for the game. There has not been a balance patch for an extremely long time as well, I think maybe two years. The game, in all intents and purposes, has been completed and is done. So if you're getting into this game expecting more post-launch content, I have some bad news for you, but even so, there is still a lot of depth and a lot you can really go for right now, which I think is enough. But, of course, with an older game, you have to ask, how is it right now? 
Pilot, we are our number two to one. When it comes to reviewing or recommending any game that is over maybe three years old, there are three major questions you have to ask. Is it worth getting? Is the community still active? And is it fun? Is it worth getting? Yes, absolutely. The campaign alone, I'd say makes it worth it. If you want more for your time, because I can understand $30 for a four hour campaign might be a little bit steep, the multiplayer is still incredibly enjoyable. And if you're having a hard time with the multiplayer, grab some friends for Frontier Defense, you can do that too. Hell, run the damn gauntlet for 40 hours, because people like to do that also. Overall, it is absolutely worth getting as a game. There is plenty there for you to sink your teeth into. Second question, however, is, is the community still active? And that answer is also yes. This game still has an active community. While it might take you a little bit of time to find game modes such as Last Tie and Standing or Pilots vs. Pilots, whenever I log into Attrition, at least on Steam, I get a game in under a minute. Like, I have plenty of people that I see playing this game all the time. There are still plenty of people online playing Titanfall 2. It is still a very active community, and they are still die-hard players into it. The community is absolutely still active for this game. They die hard it. They are always playing, and there's always time for someone new to jump into attrition. And finally, three, is it fun? The campaign, absolutely. The hardest difficulty can be quite, quite tough sometimes, especially that fight. But overall, it is still very fun. The gameplay is smooth. The Titans are exciting and the maps are, you know, while not as good as Titanfall 1, they're still interesting to see what you can do with the movement potential and the upgrades and the creative class and the customization. Overall, it is very, very fun. The only caveat to the fun side of things is that with a game like this, whose skill ceiling is so high that it breaks the orbit from Earth, you can end up to that situation where you go against just, just demigods, like that damn Kraber son of a bitch. Some of these players are just absolute gods at Titanfall, and occasionally you'll run into them and you'll just have your ass completely creamed. Sometimes, though, there are benevolent gods, people who are amazing at the game, but they use lower tier weapons, just kind of run around and mess around because that's how they find their fun now. Because being Gen 100 with a stim in a car really isn't that exciting or special or makes you look very good. <laughs> On the other side, there is a slight issue that I can't really put a, a term to. Um, 4chan affiliation? I have a really hard time honestly explaining what this kind of of situation is. For Honor had the exact same thing, where the game is decently popular on, on 4chan or like message boards like that, so every so often you'll join Titanfall, and then the person on the enemy team's entire goal is to say as many slurs in the chat as possible and use the most overpowered stuff and and then DDoS somebody, I don't know. You get those kinds of people sometimes, and while it's definitely lower on the amount of games, there are still a couple of those really unsavory types that you might run into. It's a double-edged sword because whenever a game has the affiliation, whatever this term I'm trying to figure out is, it makes the memes really fucking good. For Honor, even though I don't really play it anymore, I still had some crisp memes on that game. And so Titanfall has that same thing, but at the same time, you will run into some of those people. And luckily, that's like only 5% of games. Normally things are great. And unlike a game like League of Legends or Overwatch, where you're stuck with the person for a long, long time, it's just one FPS multiplayer game and then you're gone. And honestly, even those people probably aren't as toxic as League of Legends is Overwatch. So. Even so, you might run into a few unsavory types, but besides that, overall, there are still lots of people in the community that really want to foster new players and bring new people in, and they are much more prominent and prevalent than the other type. So overall, is it fun? Absolutely. Will you struggle a little bit sometimes? Sure, but any game with this high of a skill ceiling feels that way. Overall, and with finality, Titanfall 2 is one of the best FPS games I have ever played. It is currently sitting for $30 on Steam, however, it does go on sale quite often. I would recommend either waiting a little bit if you really can't spare the $30, but even so, I think the $30 is absolutely worth it. It's also on consoles, if you'd like to get it there as well. And honestly, even though this game is, you know, five years old and 
There really doesn't seem like there's going to be a Titanfall 3, and if there is, it won't be for another five years or so. This still holds up incredibly well. It isn't that old, but the community holds up, the gameplay holds up. It still feels like one of the best FPSs I've played to the modern day. I only have a couple issues with it. Some of the maps, I think the UI isn't particularly great either, and that's a... That's about it. I would say maybe check if it's on GOG. I don't know if they sell it on GOG. Um, I don't have a code for it either, uh, but, you know, hey, GOG, I would like one. So, you know, hit me up on that. But either way, I would still think it's absolutely worth the money. Though, of course, like I said, it goes on sale often, so if you need to wait, definitely go ahead and wait. Thank you all so very much for watching this video. Thank you to all my patrons very much for supporting me, allowing me to create this kind of content, as well as the YouTube members and memberships. And thanks to all of you who've been buying the merch recently. This uh, Adeptus Ridiculous tee, which uh, you can't really see in the back too well, but it's one of the best-selling stuff I've had in a while, and I, I really, really like how it turned out. So I really appreciate you all picking up merchandise, whether it's the hoodies or the shirts or even the mugs and stuff. It's, it's really cool, and it's really cool to see it on Twitter and stuff when you buy it and you're like... Hey, Bricky, my mug came in. I'm like, ah, that's cool. Anyway, I have like one question to ask because apparently the patrons think that the question section of the Discord is just for shit posting. Bricky, why am I sad? <laughs> you don't have enough gamer subs. Let's fucking go. Yep, that's the reason why. Code Bricky.